fellow Americans, good evening. I am humbled. I am moved and I am honored beyond belief. Yes, it's true. So for the Democrats, Republicans, Independents, the lower class, middle class and upper class, for the green, blue and orange parties and all of this stuff, I took the oath to serve you. To those who have no power and no muscles, to those who lack discipline, and those who are disappointed in politics as usual and all those things, I took the oath to serve you also. Here's another illustration of all of this. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger went on CBS 60 Minutes on October 31st on Halloween night and said, yeah, I'd like to be your president. I'd like to repeal the 22nd Amendment. Now, Orrin Hatch, his good buddy, has introduced a bill to repeal the 22nd Amendment so a foreigner can be our president. No other country puts up with this, folks. Congressman Ben Rohrbacher, another neocon, has introduced a bill so Arnold can be our new president. And he's got Warren Buffett and Lord Rothschild literally funding him. And people ask, well, how are they going to get this done? Well, after a new terror attack, they're going to have a constitutional convention where they can rewrite the entire Bill of Rights and get rid of the 22nd Amendment. And Arnold openly says this is where it's all going. George W. Bush is trying to privatize Social Security. Arnold Schwarzenegger is trying to privatize pensions of firefighters, police, and teachers. George W. Bush cut funding for schools. Arnold Schwarzenegger cut school funding by $3 billion. George W. Bush raises the cost of college loans. Arnold Schwarzenegger raises college tuition and fees. Both are leaving our children behind. Call Arnold Schwarzenegger. Tell him he's too much like George W. Bush. The guy has posed for multiple hardcore homosexual porno mags. The guy in a 1978 bodybuilding contest in front of thousands of witnesses. This is all posted on my website. for screaming, I hate all black people, calling him the N-word, going, niggers, get out, you're subhuman, screaming at them because he had to drop out of the contest because he had basically steroid overdoses. I want you to know I'm not fooling around here. I know I behaved badly. But my movie days are terminated. Yes, it's true. Now for the business of America, domestic business, international business, the financial markets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and all of that stuff. I pledge to create an economy which is strong, not volatile, bullish, not bearish, strong, not weak, pumped, not flabby, and so forth, and so on, etc., etc. I'll be back. I mean, let me just pass all this up. He said in a Rolling Stone interview, I admire Adolf Hitler. I always wanted to be a dictator. We have that posted. He then sits there and smokes pot in front of the camera. The guy admittedly gropes all these women and admits to it. And then he never sued these guys, by the way. A major magazine, Premier Magazine, in August of 2001 did a report where if somebody on the set isn't good looking, he makes them get on their knees and he calls them a dog. And he runs around calling everyone pieces of garbage. <laughs> hey! Oh, I'm sorry. It just looks so ridiculous. <laughs> well, you told me to show you. Oh, forgive me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> oh, you're just looking at me. You think I'm funny, huh? You think I'm funny? Well, you've got to admit, I mean, when you do that, you look like some big ape or something. Stop that! Stop this! Why can't I go? Because your place is here with the rest of us. You let Mas travel. That's his job, until... Mankind learns to dispense with his services and lives in peace. Mars must go where he's called. I only want to browse around. You'd only get into trouble. I have been here thousands of years. I am bored. Don't interrupt your father. Besides, these mortals are bedeviled by as aggravating a collection of annoyances 
as it is possible for one to imagine. It may not be entirely without merit, but you wouldn't like it down there. Let me be the judge of that. I am tired of the same old faces, the same old things. Tired or not, you're staying here. I mean, my point is, is that the Jewish groups are endorsing it because he's pro-Israel, pro-war, pro-New World Order. And the guy's running around saying he admires Hitler and saying, I don't care if Kurt Baltheim's a Nazi, we love him. And going to Austria after he's out as a top Nazi officer, killing Jews and American soldiers uh, in Serbia, he goes and campaigns for him in Austria. And he hasn't given up his citizenship in Austria. He has dual citizenship and is the governor of the fifth largest economy in the world. Think about that. But the illustration is, I was there at the Republican National Convention with Kevin Booth and others who were making the new film Martial Law that's coming out that will expose this Nazi bastard. And we're sitting there and these Republicans with their straw hats are just going, We don't want them. They were crying. I was in there videotaping all this. They were just, oh, God, he's good, man, he's great. He stopped that evil Gray Davis who was involved in Enron. Gray Davis was involved in Enron. This guy met with Ken Lane and was involved in Enron. I mean, it's getting too rich for me. He's for, he's more liberal than Bill Clinton. And they're worshiping him because it's like George Bush. The issues don't matter. The reality doesn't matter. It's how it feels and feeling like you signed up with a winner. It's the sports mentality. You get three and a half million people out when the Red Sox win and a million out for Arnold Parade, you know, for some football victory. But they won't come out to defend their country. They won't march against the Bill of Rights being burned, being torched. He is a man of perseverance. He is a man of inner strength. He is a leader who doesn't flinch, who doesn't waver, who does not back down. is a virus here it kills people and the only way we prevent it is, is to get vaccinated to wear masks to do social distancing washing your hands all the time and not just to think about well my freedom is being kind of disturbed here no screw your freedom i have a headache it might be a tumor it's not a tumor
British, um, or the Illuminati based in Britain, um, took over Australia too? Yes, I have found exactly the same stories. That the Aborigines, like Africans, were deliberately softened up long before they, they were colonized by the white people. There were men, mysterious men, who often posed as gods, who, who undermined the will of the Aborigines to resist the encroachment of the colonialists. One day, Mutoni was in his house when somebody knocked on the door frame of the house. And Mutoni asked the intruder to come in. And into their heart there came a frightening being, a being whose face was as white as the face of death, a being which wore a hood over its head, a being with unnaturally wide shoulders, a being who wore a long robe of sable antelope skin. This being squatted near the entrance of the, of the hut in which Mutlomi was. And the being told Mutlomi that he was to take one of his golden earrings, the earrings of kingship, and go on foot for a long distance to find a young man known as Dipoko and to give him this earring. But what are you saying, great one, said Musomi, utterly terrified by this unearthly being. You are saying that I, Musomi, must go and find this boy and make him my successor? These are perhaps the two most important verses of the whole Quran for understanding the world order today. He says, بَعْدَ أُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَحَرَامٌ عَلَى قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا a town and Allah has destroyed that town and the people of the town have been expelled and having expelled them Allah has placed a ban on them that they can never return they can come back as tourists no problem with that but they cannot return to reclaim that town, to reclaim that land as their own. Hatta, oh, until, until when? Hatta, idha futihat ya'juj wa ma'juj, wa hum min kulli hadabin yansilun. Oh, they will be allowed to return at some point in time. When will that be? When Gog and Magog are released and they spread out in all directions, we can exclusively reveal that George Bush Sr.'s Can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, gotta cut you down. 
Sooner or later, gotta cut you down. Go tell that long tongue liar. Go and tell that midnight rider. Tell the rambler, the gambler, the backbiter. Tell him that God's gonna cut him down. Tell him that God's gonna cut him down. Well, my goodness gracious, let me tell you the news. My head's been wet with the midnight dew. I've been down on bended knee, talking to the man from Galilee. He spoke to me with a voice so sweet. I thought I heard the shuffle of angels sweet. He called my name and my heart stood still. When he said, John, go do my will. Go tell that long-tongued liar. Go and tell that midnight rider. Tell the rambler, the gambler, the backbiter. Tell him that God's gonna cut him down. Tell him that God's gonna cut him down. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, gotta cut you down. Sooner or later, gotta cut you down. Well, you may throw your rock. Hide your hand, working in the dark against your fellow man. But as sure as God made black and white, what's done in the dark will be brought to the light. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, gotta cut you down. Sooner or later, gotta cut you down. Go tell that long tongue liar. Go and tell that midnight rider, tell the rambler, the gambler, the backbiter. Tell him that God's gonna cut you down. Tell him that God's gonna cut you down. Tell him that God's gonna cut you down. The new money is going to be invisible money. You can't see it. It's going to be intangible money. You can't touch it. It's no longer possible for you to conceal how much money you have. Your enemy will know exactly how much money you have. Even if you have it hidden underneath a pillow. Your enemy will not only know how much money you have, your enemy, your enemy will know how you are spending your money. And the minute the enemy gets the evidence that this is a man who is spending of his wealth in the way of Islam, they'll come after you. <laughs> they'll come after you to brand you a terrorist and to rip you off of whatever wealth you have. And so Dajjal, in a day which is like him, he, he, he week now moves from the United States to Israel and Israel becomes its headquarters. We said that Israel is about to wage a big war. They prepared for this when the Israeli Mossad and the CIA attacked America on September 11 and put the blame on us, us Muslims. They know that's false. They know that they're speaking a monstrous lie. But yet they do it. The Prophet Islam warned us that amongst the times of the last day, he said, would be that people would speak great lies. So beware, he said. Israel wages a big war, takes control of the world. When Israel takes control of the world, Globalization brings the whole world together and Israel is able to control mankind.
never harmed missionaries. And a king who followed the Jewayo, King Dinizu, who was brutally tortured by the English, had a great friend in reverend in Bishop Colenso, a Christian bishop, and his daughters, one of whom was called Mary. Although he had suffered so much at the hands of the British authorities, King Dini Zulu never abandoned his white Christian friends. They comforted him and he depended desperately upon them and their Bible in his darkest hours. Law ever become a reality in America? Some fear any nuclear, biological, or chemical attack on U.S. territory might trigger just that. And as KSLA News 12 Jeff Farrell discovered, the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. The primary thing that we say to anybody is let's cooperate and get this thing over with, and then we'll settle the differences once the crisis is over. Such clergy response teams would walk a tightrope between the needs of the government versus the wishes of the public. In a lot of cases, these clergy would already be known in the neighborhoods in which they're helping to defuse that situation. For the clergy, one of the biggest tools that they will have in helping calm the public down or obey the law is the Bible itself, specifically Romans, Romans 13. Because the government is established by the Lord, you know, and, uh, and that's what we believe in the Christian faith. That's what's stated in the scripture.
patience is quite understandable. I'm impatient with stupidity. My people have learned to live without it. I'm afraid my people haven't.
this? No. <laughs> Mr. Constantine, I'd like to ask you a few questions. I know the circles you travel in, the occult, exorcisms. Easy there, hero. It's Dragon's Breath. I thought you couldn't get it anymore. Oh, I, uh, I know a guy who knows a guy. I thought that you could at least point me in the right direction. Yeah, okay, sure. Please. What if I told you that God and the devil made a wager for the souls of all mankind? No direct contact with humans, that would be the rule. Just influence. See who would win. Demons stay in hell. Angels in heaven. They call it the balance. I need to see what you see. You do this, there's no turning back. You see them. They see you. Understand?